right. Behold the Hoffman number no. 7 adjustable modulating valve. If you have one of these valves on your heating system, it most likely means you have one of the best heating systems around from the 1920s. The valve itself was patented sometime around uh, November of 1918. Uh, this a uh, particular version came out about uh, after uh, sometime after 1925. Um, the uh, typical valve had a uh, open and shut system, which could be turned with less than one full turn to open and close. But it really, the beauty of this valve is it's two valves in one, in that not only did it open and shut, but you could dial in using a shield with these gradations restrict the valve to go from anywhere from 200 square feet of radiation to zero and um, anywhere in between. So let's break it down. First thing you do is remove this top screw. Do not remove, do not lose this top screw. It is OEM. The threads are 30 threads to the inch. Number 10, 30 threads to the inch, which I don't think is easily obtainable. If you lose this screw, probably the best thing you'll be able to do is run a 1032 tap and basically re-tap the hole. And then you can get a uh, 1032 National Fines screw to go on top. The main weak point of these valves is that if this uh, spindle, the open and shut feature, fails and then somebody tries to use a pipe wrench or something to turn it, what will probably happen is this will shear and then the valve is pretty well done and you have to either replace it or rebuild it using modern uh, components like from uh, Tunst the Tunstall Corporation. So the next thing you're faced with is this castellated nut. And you can probably get a spanner wrench and uh, some penetrating oil. And if you get the right spanner wrench, and let's be the correct size, you might be able to get that loose. What I've done is over-engineer a uh, special impact tool which fits in the uh, four sections of this castellated nut and I'm able to uh, break it loose without uh, the uh, time necessary to deal with uh, penetrating oil. Then you can get a 5 8 hole saw which is I think the smallest they make, 16 millimeter and grind out the um, packing material using uh, this and a uh, vacuum cleaner to collect the dust. Once that's removed, a couple drops of penetrating oil will allow you to make sure that this can move and you've got to make sure it's open before you proceed to the next step. I'm going to get a large adjustable wrench. Uh, this one here has been pretty well gripped by a uh, pipe wrench, but uh, my recommendation would be a 1 and 13 16 wrench and get the top off. Once you get the top off, you'll see what I mean by the restrictor plate. So that's full on. And then as you rotate this inner core, you can go from almost all the way closed to almost all the way open and anywhere in between. So if you have a small radiator that doesn't need as much steam in order to balance out your system, you can dial this in so even if you have the valve fully open only so much steam is going to pass through to the radiator. You're usually confronted with missing or completely uh, degraded uh, washer material. So you just spin this out using a flathead screw. You're able to get this nut off, which is an extra large nut, which I do not believe is commercially available anymore. And you drop the screw out. The screw is basically 
a 10 30 second standard screw so you can get a brass one almost anywhere pan head drop it in and the next bit of fun you're going to need to have to have done is a you can have this punched out of um, EDPM rubber, it's about one inch diameter, quarter inch thick with a, uh, a little less than a quarter inch hole in the middle. Fits in there. Get yourself a 10 by half inch brass washer and a nice new nut. And you can rebuild this valve and restore it to its on off functionality. Dial that back in, and you're ready to roll. Now, what I would do is I would mark this top spindle, which is movable, so you know that this is the center and max open. That way, as you close the device, you find out where this locks on. This can still move if you loosen this top nut. And there's your center. And you use that and make sure that lines up. The literature on how to operate this device is found in the uh, Hoffman uh, data book. This is from 1925. Uh, and also mentions that the uh, this particular valve sold for $6 in list price in uh, 1925. And this is the how you're supposed to be able to adjust it. You dial it in and then lock using your adjustable wrench. You lock this um, top nut down. Make sure that doesn't move. Like so. Then, you take your 3 32nd packing material, I'd use about 9 inches at first, pack it in, pack some more in, and uh, put it back together. If this needs replacing, I had a uh, friend, basically, Take this, scan it, and um, make a, a digital file on it, and use the 3D printer to make this out of uh, ABS plastic. This screw here is the same 10 by 30 threads per inch screw, so again, I would not lose either one of these items unless you uh, have a uh, a tap it wouldn't be a bad idea to include in your kit a uh, 10 30 second die you might be able to clean these up and make it work and there's pretty much your basic introduction to the uh, Hoffman number no. 7 modulating